What up y'all, welcome to the channel. Listen, one of the most incredible travel experiences that you can humanly possibly have is being in Ghana. During the month of December, it is called Desi December. This is a time of entertainment, culture, music. Listen, it is an all out celebration for our people coming from all around the world to come back home. Listen, Ghana in December, it is a movie. Let's go. And listen, I'm gonna share things with you that I wish I would've knew before going to Ghana during Deti December. From like the top things you should do, some of the top concerts and festivals you should attend, what hotels you should consider staying at, some of the best restaurants to eat at. Listen, I had an amazing time and 100%, I wanna make sure that if you're watching this video, when you go to Ghana, that you have an amazing time too. So I'm gonna break it all down for you, I got you. Upon arrival at the airport, I felt like I was home. Ladies and gentlemen, another beautiful day, and guess what? In another beautiful country, just landed in Accra, Ghana, and it's literally one of the most amazing times to be out here. There's, it, there's so much festivities, there's Afro Cella, Afro Nation, it's about to be the new year. Man, Ghana's gonna be an absolute movie, so I'm here at the airport. I, I can't wait to leave and get some food, and and start turning up because uh, this weekend, this week is about to be different. And it was beautiful because I got picked up with a brother of mine that I actually just met. Well, not my real brother, but a brother of mine, right? Um, Bankies, he's actually one of my mentees. So for you guys that don't know, um, one of the things that I do for a living is I have an Airbnb business. Uh, that's allowed me to really have the freedom and passive income to travel to a lot of places. But I also have an Airbnb coaching program. And one of my students, actually my first student from Africa, Bankies, he, he, he launched his Airbnb business. He's, he's a really, a, just an entrepreneur of entrepreneurs. He has a lot of different things going on, but I helped him launch his Airbnb business, and which is really cool. I got a chance to meet him in person because he lives in Accra, Ghana. And he picked, he picked us up from the airport, and I thought that was really, really cool, man. Shout out to my brother, Bankies, right? Um, but he picked us up, and uh, he drove us, our, drove us to our hotel. Now listen, the hotel that, you know, that we, that we stayed at, it was Accra City. Now, would I recommend you stay at that hotel? There, that really wasn't my first choice. What I would recommend is, if you do plan on going to Deti December in Ghana, try your best to book your hotel in advance because things get booked up fast and crazy and they, write, and they raise up prices. As what happens to, you know, hotels in, in, in any place where there's a major event, right? So Accra City was a hotel that was still available, was reasonable price, so that's where I ended up staying there. It was it was a decent hotel, that's what I say, it was decent, decent, right? That, that, what I do remember is they have a really good breakfast um, buffet, that was really good. But some really good hotels, um, the Kapinski, that's a major hotel, um, quality hotel, um, Movenpick, another really good hotel, a Marriott, another really good hotel, and there's a few others, but those are kind of like some of the better ones out there. But hey, I was good, I was comfortable, and it held me down. <laughs> After dropping off the bags of the hotel, it was time to hit the streets. And the first spot that we decided to go was probably one of the top rooftop bars in Ghana. And really cool, this is actually one of the tallest buildings in West Africa. The bar is called Sky Bar 25. And let me tell you something, when you go to Ghana, you absolutely positively gotta pull up there because the view, incredible. The food, fire, the drinks, impeccable. The vibes, A1. And what I tell you is, listen guys, again, when you're Ghana, you just have to experience being there for sure. But I would also recommend uh, making a reservation in advance because it is a popular place it gets booked up pretty fast. But because of Banky, and again, I know some people, right? I was able to get hooked up the day of, right? But make sure you go to Sky Bar 25 because it's gonna, it's gonna make sure your first night, you don't gotta go there first night, but if you do go there first night like I did, it's gonna set your trip 
on, on a good path. Now, a really key thing to do is, if you're a person that's really into like festivals and concerts and things like that, there's some of the, actually the biggest events going on during Death to December. Um, Afro Cella is actually a really, really big event. They're actually altering the name of Afro Cella, but um, Afro Cella is a really big event. It's about a you know three day festival. Also, there's another one, Afro Nation. I actually went to Afro Nation um, because I was sponsored right they, they hooked the brother up with some tickets and you know with these events again there's there's different you know major artists there's there's major just talent that come and perform um and it's just there's there's food stands there's a whole lot going on and it's cool because when you tap into any of these particular events you can get the opportunity to pay like per day or you can kind of get a package to pay for the whole entire festival and some of those some of those events they come with like pre-parties and after parties and New Year's Eve parties. So if you really kind of want to organize your trip in advance, I would consider, you know, attending one of these festivals and getting a package so that way, you know, hey, I'm going to be doing this, this day, this day, this day, and I'm going to be able to have access to the pre-party and after party. And that's what happened on that first night that we arrived. We went to the pre-party for um, Afro Nation and it was a vibe again it was a it was a perfect thing to kind of like start the trip because again they they had you know artists come perform there was food there was drinks i saw a few people that i knew back back in the states and it was just straight vibes man and i just knew that man Ghana was gonna be incredible. Now the next morning, I wanted to hit the ground running. I wanted to get an early morning start because see, for me, I like to get a lot of really good content. And with all the festivities going on, again, I know there's people from all around the world here um, at, a, at an all time high. Um, so I was like, you know what, let me go to a certain place like, you know, Black Star Square. Out here in the beautiful country of Ghana, guys, I'm here at a very iconic monument here in Ghana specifically in, in Accra it is called Black Star Square guys this monument right here represents the independence of Ghana and people come from all around the world to take a nice picture and video right here and it was a good vibe man when I got there uh, there was actually a young lady there uh, that was cool because she actually was up following me on social media but she was taking some amazing pictures and videos on a horse yes she went all out and got a horse there um, as you guys can see <laughs> uh, but her content was really 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 good and listen I would recommend if you want to get some good pictures and video there to get there early bright and early before you do any Anything, right and after you know getting a bunch of content there uh, definitely was hungry because it was breakfast time and just to give you another hidden gem one of the places that you do want to eat breakfast at is a place called breakfast to breakfast and the cool thing is it was only a few minutes away um, from Freedom Square and listen guys this place is 24 7 and the food is good listen this is a perfect place to go for breakfast for sure and they have a lot of healthy and natural options which i like you know I'm, I'm slightly like a healthy nut slightly but man this this is probably one of the one of the better breakfasts i had while i was in ghana for sure so make sure you go to breakfast breakfast and let me know let me know let me know your experience right when you do go because i know i know you're gonna like it and then as uh, you know, we was wrapping up breakfast, my boy Bank hits me like, yo, bro, what are you doing? I said, man, we getting some breakfast. He's like, listen, man, you got to meet me at the beach. I said, cool. So he sent me a driver and uh, the driver brought us to Labadi Beach. All right, guys. So just got to one of the most popular beaches here in Accra. It's called Labadi Beach. This beach, this beach is absolutely amazing. Check out the vibe do on this beach you can ride horses you can you can surf you can ATV they have a lot of natural fruits listen the seafood guys the seafood was amazing I got this seafood blender it had whole fish it had shrimps it had it had calamari man if you want to get yourself a nice beverage and drink a cocktail whatever you want to call it while checking out the beach it's nothing but vibes right and, and the cool thing is this there's also like so many talented youths <laughs> right kids on Ghana man but you'll have kids perform on the beach you doing like their local you know dances or local performances but trust and believe they're gonna want a couple dollars right or in their case they're gonna want some CDs they don't want they don't want something right which is all cool because I love to support the the kids the people uh, especially when they're displaying their talent but listen man this was just nothing but vibes and again 
When you go to Accra, I highly encourage you to go to Labadi Beach because it's a part of the vibe. You gon' you're not going you're not gonna regret it. Later on that night was the first night of the Afro Nation Festival. And I was excited because I heard again, this is my, my first Detti December, so I knew I knew I knew what to expect some big things, right? Now let me let me tell y'all something. These festivals, man, like just getting inside, it could be a bit much, right? Because again, you got thousands and thousands of people. Some locals, some people come coming from all around other parts of the world, right? So it was a little hectic going in, I gotta admit. And uh, but it was all vibes, right? So upon getting in, you know, just just the music amazing just the vibe the energy felt good uh, but i don't know about you guys you know I'm, I'm a slight introvert so i don't always like to be in the mix of the crowd i'm the type of person that i need to sit in vip i, I kind of need to be in, like my own section so the beautiful thing is there was like a vip section like upstairs uh so i literally you know went through the crowd and then made my way up to vip and it was just vibes man they had bars up there you had some very influential people in vip just hanging out it was just good networking opportunities uh there were artists like meek mill performing and others you know well-known artists my little cousin you know dj flow was dj shout out to my cousin dj right it was just nothing but vibes y'all like first first night and um, again, it's, it's just what you do. You gotta go to one of these festivals, uh, especially when you're there for Detti December. It's gonna make your experience, you know, a true Detti December, in my opinion. Get some treats, get some merch. That's my time. I appreciate you guys forever. Let's get it! But all night it was just straight vibes. Uh, but again, I don't know what it is. I just can't really sit at concerts like do for the whole time, but I'm good for like a couple hours. I felt like that concert went from like, Midnight up until like, I don't know, late. <laughs> but I was there for a few hours and it was definitely vibes. <laughs> the next day, again, it was time to hit the ground running, even after a long night. You know what I realized during this time? People don't typically wake up early in the morning during Detti December, man. They out until wee hours in the morning. They don't probably wake up until like 12, one o'clock. This is, and this is very normal. But anyways, this day we decided to go to the Abori Botanical Garden. It was about an hour away from Accra. And listen, this is one of the top things and top places to see when you visit Ghana, right? This is literally the biggest and oldest botanical garden in Ghana, guys. It is such a beautiful and peaceful place. It's very historical. It's been there since the 1800s. They have these like tall palm trees that they legit like shipped from the United States. It literally looked like palm trees like out of the California, right? Like it looks like, you know, like those streets in California where you see like all those rows of palm trees. It has this road like, road like that at the garden. So, so beautiful. Highly, highly encourage you to go there. And also too, at the garden, there's like this little, there's like this restaurant. All right guys, so we're about to finally eat some food, have not eaten all day. That's what happens when you go to these big festivals and concerts and you have late nights. But anyway, so here at the garden, right, there's this nice restaurant and they have a lot of local good foods. And I heard that this is actually a restaurant that the Queen Elizabeth had eaten at as well. So I I'm gonna show you guys how it looks. This is where the Queen ate. So if the Queen ate here, it's good for me. And it's like very, homely it's a very local homely type environment um that's the best way i can explain this restaurant right but the food oh my god i'm listen i'm still thinking about the food my time in ghana this was probably one of the best places that that i ate the restaurant inside the abori botanical, botanical garden Ooh, it Listen, the food was just A1. That You just gotta go visit there and make sure you eat there and let your boy know how it was because A1, trust and believe, A1. My belly was full. <laughs> Later on that night, it was day two of the festival and you already know, more vibes, more artists, more performances, just an all around good time, more good food, more drinks. Listen, just all vibes, man. And listen, I just kicked back and I just enjoyed it. So now it's New Year's Eve and we decided to go to a really good restaurant. It was a restaurant that a lot of people kept telling us about. Um, it's called Buka and it's one of the best restaurants in Accra apparently. And it was busy because I guess the word got out that it was a really good restaurant, right? So I highly recommend uh, you make a reservation. But listen guys, I mean the aesthetic of the place was really good. The food was really good. The drinks were good. Hey, let me give you a disclaimer. Let me give you a disclaimer. 
Although the food is amazing in Ghana, guys, I'm just gonna tell you, most restaurants that you go to, you gonna you gonna wait a little bit. So I, I just I wanna I wanna tell you that because if you going if you going out to these places to eat, maybe get a little snack before you go because it almost like they like go fishing and they go hunt down the meat before <laughs> like while while after you order. Um, but listen, it, everything tastes fresh and amazing. I don't know it, but it's a little long time for you to get your food. But it's worth it. It is worth it, I'll tell you that. But it was a great way, great afternoon, uh, just to kind of like get ready for the, for the, for the, for the evening, because it was New Year's Eve, so it was about to go down. So definitely had some champagne, and it was good vibes. So it's New Year's Eve, right? And when you're at a place where there's like so much going on, there's a million and one parties, you know, everyone's having a New Year's Eve party, and you're like wondering, man, where should I go? What should I do? Because you don't want to pick the wrong event and like <laughs> this is where you spend the New Year's. So after a couple of phone calls, a couple of text messages, you know, running into some people that either I knew or they knew me from social media, the overall just consensus was the, the, the place to be was at Labadi Beach Hotel. That's where the New Year's Eve party of the night was going down, right? And the people that put together Afrochella, they were part of the people that was the promotion for this event. So I said, you know what? That's the one, let's go, let's go ahead and make it happen. And we had some friends that had a table as well. So that even sweetened the deal even more because again, I'm just in a place in my life, if I'm gonna go to any type of club or party or event like that, um, I would prefer being in some type of VIP or some type of section. And does that make me bougie? Does that make me something along those lines? I don't know, maybe. Don't judge me, don't judge me. I'm just saying, I just, that's just my preference. Some of y'all feel me, some of y'all judge me. I'm, 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 I feel like, I feel like you judging me. I'm looking at you, you're judging me. But anyways, so we pulled up and man, it was vibes. The people, amazing. that you know that that's that knew me from the gram right um but guys listen the drinks was flowing bottles were popping uh they had people spitting out fire right they got the dj on stage and it was just just again just the energy was amazing and then right when it's time for the ball to drop they had an amazing fireworks show <laughs> It was a new year, baby. It was a new year. And I felt in my heart, in my spirit, I said, listen, there was no better place that I could have been in this very moment than Accra, Ghana. I felt like I was truly home and it was an amazing, amazing way to start the new year, for sure. The next day, still feeling like New Year's Eve, had a couple of drinks, I'm sorry. <laughs> but listen, my mentee Banky's hit me, he's like, yo, I want you to come by the Airbnb, I'm gonna send the driver. And I was like, yo, let's do it, right? Because again, I saw the Airbnb from the pictures and the videos, but I was like, you know, bro, I wanna come check out your Airbnb. But listen, this man Airbnb is so nice, it's like, I feel like it's one of the best Airbnbs in, in Ghana, but it was booked up like just the whole month because of the festivities. But while I was there, it was available for like one day. So he's like, bro, I want you to come by, spend the night and vibe, I got you. I said, sure, right? So he definitely took me, took me to the property, showed me around, it was all love, gave me some Moet. And listen guys, when you're in Ghana, make sure that you stay at this Airbnb. And I wanna say he has like two properties next to each other, so you got options. And he has like another one. Listen, and they're, this is their luxury, luxury in Ghana, right? I'm gonna drop the link in the description so that way you can book it. Because again, I think it's one of the best Airbnbs out there and I'd highly encourage it. And if you do book it, make sure that you tell him that I sent you. Let him know your boy Kamoy sent you because you won't thank me when you go, trust me, it's nice. Now the next morning, we were getting ready to do probably the most incredible thing that we're about to do in Ghana. I didn't know this was gonna be the most incredible thing. I thought the most incredible thing was gonna be like the festivals and seeing the concerts and things like that. But this right here, what we're about to do was probably the most epic part. And I think probably the most important part of the trip. And it was taking the journey to the Cape Coast Castle, which is pretty much, the slave castles. This is the history of like what happened 
you know, when it came to slavery in Africa, right? And that drive from Accra to Cape Coast Castle is probably about three hours. And it's a beautiful drive because you drive by all these beaches. And what I always recommend is stopping and getting some coconuts. So we stopped by, you know, some dudes outside. They had the coconuts with the machete and they were like, what, what, what? <laughs> and you were able to get some fresh coconut. And I, guys, I think for me, I just love coconut. Everywhere I go, I always get coconut, but the coconuts in Ghana, A1. Upon arrival, you know, in the area of where the castle is, man, I just, it just felt like so much history. Like, just, it just felt real, right? And I just knew that I was getting ready to see some things that I need to see, but it was, it was about to be surreal. And then we finally arrived at the castle. And if you don't know, the Cape Coast Castle is the largest building that pretty much embodies the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade. And when you look at it, you just, you feel the energy of being just amongst it. And as we step inside, it's, it's almost like you're transported back in time, right? Like the castle's dark corridors and the somber atmosphere serves as a reminder of all the suffering that was endured by countless enslaved Africans. It was a crazy experience, right? But it's very important to understand our shared history. And also, and also too, I just want to shout out the, the tour guides, right? Because the tour guides did an amazing time of just painting the picture and sharing the story of really what happened many years ago to our people, right? And then when we got to this one part, it was called the door of no return. Oh my goodness, right? This doorway symbolized the final departure point for enslaved Africans, marking their irre irreversible journey across the Atlantic. It's a, it's a truly emotional moment, and it truly emphasizes the importance of never forgetting the terror that happened in the past. Also experiencing uh, the underground dungeons where the enslaved Africans were held captive for just, a, just an extended period of time, right? Before their scary journey, they were cramped up in, in dark spaces, lack of light. And guys, the floor, the floor was so dark and our tour guide was telling us the reason why it was so dark is because from all the feces, the feces, 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 you understand what I mean, of, 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 of the slaves and like it got moshed into the floor and that's what made it so dark. And it sounds a little disgusting, but it's just so crazy. They were so cramped up in this small environment, right? It's a really stark reminder of the resilience and the strength that was displayed by those who endured such an imaginable hardship. And I gotta tell you guys, like, experiencing this, hearing the story, being there. I think every single person on this planet truly, truly needs to go there and witness this and, and experience this. And, and most importantly, really learn and understand what our people went through. I think going back home, it's more than just having fun and, and, and like, you know, turning up and, and eating good food and, and, and experiencing the culture. Right, like that stuff is important, but truly experiencing the culture is like experiencing our history. And I feel like if you go to Ghana, you have to make that drive to Cape Coast Castle and witness this, you know, the, the slave castles and things of that nature, man, I'm telling you. It's really emotional, man. Like words just can't express just the feeling being there, but it's, it's really needed. It's really needed. It will truly make you appreciate what we have today, man, just. It's crazy. Hey, listen, that was the end of our Ghana trip, man. And I rate going to Ghana 10 out of 10. One of the best places I've been to around the world, man. And listen, if you're going to Ghana, make sure you go to the places I mentioned. Listen, you're gonna have an amazing time. Ghana is a very rare gem on this planet. And um, I look forward to going back and listen, if you like this, if this video is enjoyable for you, if you learned something, if I helped you out and like maybe, you know, guided you on how you should create your trip, listen, hit the like button. Um, also too, if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. Your boy is going to be taking on more adventures around the world and I want you to come with me, right? And also too, let me know in the comments where I should go next. Let me know if you got some trips coming up. Let me know where you plan on going next because I want to, I want to see what's up. I want to see what you got going on, right? Listen, man, you got one life to live. Let's travel the world together, man. Let's let's do it. I feel like 
you know, we don't know how long we're gonna be here. And it may sound cliche, but for real, I really love travel. I love experiencing different places around the world. I love meeting different people, you know, just, just being amongst different cultures. And I feel like everybody should experience that same thing because it, it expands your mind, it expands your horizon, and I feel like it makes you a better person. So guys, I'm about to get out of here. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'ma holla at y'all. Let's go.